We're back. I'm a little bit drunk. Hi guys. It's been a it's been a long time away. Me and Fiona have been plotting big things to come. We've taken a hiatus from YouTube and the podcast recently because someone has been doing some travelling. The fuck's that been all about? Well, I don't say travelling like I've been globetrotting. You have been globetrotting. No, I You have, have been unnecessarily travelling in the midst of COVID. Not seeing your family back home or anything, and quarantining properly. She has. But yeah, we've been travelling, we've been no, we have in and amongst the we world. We have done one thing, Vincenzo. We've we been have coughing not... in people's mouths. <laughs> we have um, not done one... We've been visiting <laughs> care homes of the elderly. And uh, we've just been doing all around sensible things, basically. No, seriously. Um, we've had a hiatus for a while. It's my fault. And I really like... The YouTube game, I like the Instagram game, I'm going to start streaming soon and I, I like what I do on here and I think it's fun and it's a fun outlet but it's only fun when things that make me laugh and make Fiona laugh and things that I want to do come to fruition and the ideas excite me when we come up with them and I feel like as of the past few months, if not the last year, um, I've had this battle with, I don't want to do the stereotypical YouTube videos that menswear influencers do or menswear YouTubers do or fashion YouTubers in general or any YouTuber. I want to do something that is 50-50 fashion and funny. I want to try, I want to try and, you know, I want to try and be funny for you guys and I want to express my fashion taste and I want to make light-hearted jokes out of the industry, out of people, out of specific clothes, but at the same time I want to find a non-tacky way to give advice and I've just in the past year been struggling to think of ways to do that and I think it's time for me to stop thinking and more doing because I don't think there is a specific way I can get this idea out to you guys in an original way other than being myself so I'm going to start my videos again and just see what happens and me and Fiona are going to do our best to have a fun structure and we're going to do as much as we can to entertain everyone but also please ourselves and I think that's a really big thing because as much as I appreciate the support of everyone and you know like I haven't posted a video in a while and how many subscribers I still have still blows my mind and followers on Instagram and everything and I just really wanted to say that it's really appreciated the support and you and the support are a massive part of it but to pretend that not a big part of it as well is to please myself and please Fiona and us make good content that we enjoy is you know it, that's that's also a major part of it and I want it to be a situation where I'm making videos that I like and that I want to share and then you like them too if you like them. I want it to be as natural as that. So um, without further ado, let's go back to doing what we do best, which is shitting on people for picking the wrong clothes. How's that? So uh, today what we're going to do is... So, wait. Don't click your toes. I do it all the time. Wait. Stop doing it. Stop trying. Ugh. Sometimes... Oh, that was my hip. What? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Okay, sorry. So our first video back, in classic, cynical, judgmental Enzo fashion, is going to be... We have decided... We have decided to rate complex closets. I think it's an amazing platform. And I'm really happy Complex have done it. I think it's very interesting to see insights into your favourite celebrity's wardrobe. And uh, so far I'm not impressed at all. I'm not gonna lie. They're fucking shit. Most of them, if not all of them. So, today's, please don't shoot me, um, is Ray Cross. Don't shoot me. Don't beat me up. Don't do anything. Please. Please. 
So firstly, we have our first ever sponsor. Firstly, we have our first ever sponsor? Firstly, we have our first ever sponsor. We have the Backyard Archive. They gave me these insatiable <sighs> Celine boots. They have these amazing archive pieces that personally, I think they're wizards. I don't know where the fuck they get this stuff from. I think it's great. But yeah, they're the sponsor of this video. And if you want any archive pieces, they have Raft, Prada, Celine, Margiela, other cool brands. And um, they, they just have this awesome stuff where I have no idea where they get it from. They seem to get the best pieces. And um, we'll put a link in the description and we'll, we'll flash some of their shit right now. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's look at Rick Ross's 100 room complex closet and uh, see what we think, which is probably terrible. So for authenticity's purpose, is that a word? Authenticity's purpose? No? Anyway, to make this legit, I'm gonna watch this for the first time now and um, you're just gonna have to trust that I've done that. So, you know, we're gonna, without further ado, we're gonna get straight into it. So I feel like that's what a professional YouTuber would do, you know? We're professional this year, it's 2021. Things are only gonna get worse. So uh, let's lean into the terribleness. I did not know Rick Ross lived in an actual palace that he built with R's everywhere. Everyone knows you're Rick Ross, bro. We get it, there's two R's in your name, come on. What's up everybody, it's Joe from Complex. We're somewhere in Atlanta with the Grammy nominated Rick Ross. Huh. I'm gonna say it, everyone's thought it. If you've seen the Complex channel, Joe La Puma, first of all, let's all guess, made up name, Joe La Puma. He seems like the nicest guy in the world, I'm not liking him, but Joe La Puma. His name literally means Joe the Puma. Who, whose name is that? Whose name is that? And also, second thing we need to address, he's, he dresses terribly. He dresses terribly and he's a host of a fashion sneaker centric, huh? Huh? The Puma, who doesn't dress like a Puma, or well, is the head of this. Let's, uh, uh, let's carry on. Going to give us an exclusive look at multiple sneaker closets and he's going to take us through some of his most coveted sneakers. Huh. 2017, I think you took over the complex Instagram or the Snapchat, and it was kind of chaotic in here, and now it seems to be very organized. They're definitely not going to show us clothes because they're, you know, not good. And did someone put this together recently, or it's been a work in progress? Well, you know, I got a shout out. I got, you know, mm -hmm. the ones who, you know, you know. I got to let you in on a little secret. I'll be the first to get a lot of sneakers. Okay. If you're giving your sneakers to Rick Ross first, there's a huge mistake happening. I don't know what you're thinking, but he's probably not the best advocate. Maybe like, I don't know, I can't even name a pair of shoes you think you'd be a good advocate for, but, eh. Oh. So you won't post everything, but you get them. No, nah, no, nah, you can't post everything. My dedication and love is with Way Way. Shout out to yeah, Lee Ning. Lee Ning, the cow. Yeah, collab. shout out to D Way. You know what I mean? And once I do that collaboration, I go in. You know what I mean? This is gonna be tough for me because he has mainly Jordans and Air Force Ones, and like that's just not my thing. I used to love Jordans when I was younger, but like I've never ever really been a fan of Air Force Ones. I'm not a massive fan of the silhouette. I think they're super boring and everyone loves them so I'm not gonna do well on this video I don't think. My love for the game is genuine so I'm 360 with it. What does that mean? My love for the game is 360 with it. You love the whole game. I don't see any heels in there Rick Ross. Why don't you start wearing heels bro if you really love the 360? Hmm? I want to see you in some, what's a high heel? 110? Is that too high? 120s, 5. Oof. I want to see some 120s, Rick. If you're really 360 about the game. What do you think of like what he's doing on his Jordan collabs and to see a young entertainer in the same space as you? I actually really don't mind the Travis Scott, Jordan, Nike, Jordan, Dunk, one, Lowe's. 
Jordan 1, Dunk Lows, not Dunks. I actually really don't mind those, and a lot of my friends have them, and I think they're really cool. I don't think I'd wear them personally, but I do appreciate them a lot. He on fire, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I love what he's doing, and that's why he on my shelf. Everything, I'm sure everything he do, I'm gonna be a fan of, just because I love the energy around the releases. You know how dr you know dramatic they are, I love For it. For sure. Yeah. Those are the comments of a man who has no idea what he's talking about, and he probably didn't even know there were Travis Scott's until Joe just told him. Come on, Rick. I believe this may be one pair I may never wear. Okay. And not because I believe they too valuable, because ain't nothing too valuable for mm -hmm. me to wear. Come on. Well, this is by far most definitely the pinnacle. Mm -hmm. It's much more personal. The other situations most definitely were great experiences, but it was business. Yeah. I'm super happy for Rick Ross that he has his own shoes, and I think that's amazing that anyone has their own shoe collaboration and props to him. But he literally just said, and by the looks of the shoes, it's only business. Don't do things that you're not bothered about doing. Why would you, like, like, uh, it's tough, because I get it, he loves money, and cool, do whatever you want. But also at the same time, you've clearly not tried. If you say, just business, and no one's ever heard of your trainers. This is the D-Wade. Special limited edition Hublot that I purchased. Like I say, he bought us these rings. Yeah. And this is mine, you dig? Get a close-up of that. Yeah, get a close-up of that. I'm not gonna lie, I would like a Miami Heat World Championship ring. That's pretty fucking cool. This is a Rick Ross D-Wade collaboration. And this is so dope. This is promoting my 10th album. Grammy, yep. Yo, this is, you know what I mean? That looks like they got to Nike and Nike were like, hey, this is another brand called Reebok that we think you really like, and they go, okay. And then Reebok, and they get to Reebok, and Reebok go, these are our five worst styles. Let me mash all of them together. This is your new shoe, and they're like, yeah, this is sick. Rick, you said that you used to work cleaning cars, washing cars at a gas station, and behind the gas station... He is so fucking high right now. Cleaning cars, washing cars at a gas station, and behind the gas station. To my dope boy side right, right. here. That's the sneaker head side. Mm -hmm. You know, I might jump up, jump in the dually truck, get some wings or something, but this right here is when. Rick Ross, like, rants too much. I need to go and pee. Carry on, Rick. All the dope boys used to go to the comedy shows. I remember when Tyler Perry first was doing Madea. Okay, Rick, let's continue. In my third closet, I have a set of suede yellow ballets from, I want to say, maybe 1994. Wow. Ballets were never cool, and so far, never will be. I don't want to say never, but also, never. We talked about the ballets, you're holding them. Rick Ross has so many shoes. Holy fuck. The young homies, they may have a first generation pair of Yeezys and it's on their first rack. Come on, guys. No good? Rick Ross is currently flexing yellow, like, boat shoe trainers from Bali. Even when they were cool, they weren't cool. You know what I mean? Stop yeah. parking your mom Mercedes by the mailbox. Oh, boy. Put it in the garage, guys. <laughs> He's so high. Cars, washing cars at a gas station. But those 93, 94 ballets mean more sometimes than the Yeezys to you. Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. The memories with this, when I think back to my girlfriend back then. What was it like back then? Oh man, it was. <sighs> I kind of like that he has memories attached to them and they're not just like to flex on people. Cause you know, they're not a flex. You wore them three times a week, you know what I'm saying? These had to be $80, and for a youngster, that meant a lot. Wait, hang on, he said there was something about being custom-made, and then he went to their $80? That's, they're not that, they're not from that long ago. Like, come on, Rick, keep your story consistent, bro. We are in this house, over, I think, 109 rooms, the biggest swimming pool in America. What possible use could you have for 109 rooms. I would love to see what he's filled these 109 rooms with. What? What? Maybe we'll see a Rick Ross cameo in the movie? Oh, that's without a doubt. I most definitely got to 
Look at these customs, Ross yeah, yeah, Harachis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I most definitely got to. Um... He's way too hard to do this now. He has no idea what he's talking about. Kind of like me right now being too drunk. What's your favorite part of the house? I haven't decided yet. Okay. I'm gonna be honest. I'm really just starting to learn certain parts of the crib and. Mm -hmm. You know, you have too many rooms in a house when after living there for years, you're just learning the house. I get, he probably hasn't been in all the rooms. Imagine that. Imagine not going in every room in your house. This just one of them spots. It really take a lifetime to really get to enjoy. What? What a waste. Why? 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 Let's put more R's everywhere. Why? Absolutely, and... Hang on, 109 rooms. Does he have 40 living rooms? Like, what, what, 109 rooms? How and why? Where get those from? Uh, look here, Kip, Nike. I need those. We got you. I knew he did the show for some free trainers from Wick. I'd do the same thing. So, uh, with the world's biggest pool in mind, Rick had the world's worst shoe closet in mind. Uh, no, it was okay. I mean, like, you've got to think back about where he grew up from and whatever, but, like, that was one of the least impressive shoe showcases I've seen because, like, with him in general, I would have thought he had some really special pieces and he seemed to have, like... Uh, it's tough because there's special pieces and there's special pieces when you have X amount of money. And, you know, like, you've got to do special things to get to X amount of money, so I'm not knocking that. And I'm very happy for him that he has everything he has. And, you know, like, I'm sure he loves where he lives in the house and stuff, but... So what I'm probably most disappointed about is the amount of rooms in his house. What the fuck? I'm a little bit disappointed in the fact that he was stressing the fact that he wears all his shoes and then he's got the air mags and he hasn't worn them yet. Kind of annoying. But I get it from his shoe sneaker collector sort of position. What I was very happy about was I saw a few dunks in there and a few more like tasteful old school sneakers which I really liked from him because um, I was kind of expecting the whole like custom Rick Ross, his own line, sort of the, the Harachis that you saw and whatever he was doing with Reebok and D-Wade which as he literally said in the video was kind of more of a obvious business opportunity than him really focusing on a shoe or a or a like a new design in a soul or you know taking his time and whatever it was kind of like a hey do you guys want to pick some colors and some features and he was like yeah cool let me put my name in gold on it and it's like okay man cool great what did you think would be in his wardrobe exactly what he showed us i'd like to see his actual wardrobe I don't actually, I'm not interested at all. It, was that not his actual wardrobe? That's just his shoes. Um. Yeah, but it's kind of like... I, d I was kind of expecting to see his clothes, but at the same time, would I give a shit about his clothes? Probably not. You know what I mean? I don't want to be mean, but like... He's into lab... He's more... He's definitely one of those people who's more into... Style... Than the fucking... Than like fashion, or what he's wearing. Elaborate. I think that he thinks that what he's wearing is cool because of the label and I actually agree with people looking at things for like specifically brands but at the same time if you only look at stuff for a brand it's kind of like what I'm drawn to by clothes in general is colour like if something's got an amazing colour that's my go-to and there's always something whatever it is that will catch someone's eye of something on a rail but I spoke to you about this the other day. A great way to put this is treat your clothes like your relationships. So, relationships, whether people disagree or disagree with this, I think it's 100% the truth. You need physical attraction, and that needs to be the first thing. So, when you see a guy or a girl, or whoever you, whatever you choose to identify as, you, you see them and you go, wow, like that's so beautiful. And then that's the first thing you need. It's not the most important thing, but it is a big first thing you need, and it is part of the need. And the second thing is what's on the inside, who they are, whatever. It's the same thing with clothes. There'll be a feature, a color, my thing's color. You might see a detail, you might see a shape, you might see a collar, a sleeve, a zip, whatever it is. You'll see the one thing, you'll gravitate towards it, which is your first step. Then the second step 
which is your personality in whoever you're interested in is how it fits on you and like I just feel like someone like Rick Ross is someone who is more concerned about and a lot of people are like this and maybe this is not wrong maybe it's not right whatever it is is and I used to do this a lot which is whatever you find you'll see something you get obsessed with it and then no matter what you'll take it buy it and you'll get the best size that fits for you. And I have a personal philosophy that means that not everything is made for everyone. And I don't mean that in a way of like discrimination from designers or anything nefarious or negative. I mean that in a way of everyone has different body shapes and body types, naturally or whatever you choose to be. And there is something out there of a certain shape or a certain cut or a certain designer's cut that fits you and looks better on you than it does on other people. Most of the people and most of the shapes. And I just feel like he's someone who's not massively interested in that. It's like if he sees a Gucci polo that he thinks is cool, he won't be like, oh, this fits me like shit. He'll be like, oh, let me go a size up or a size down so this fits. And um, yeah, I don't know, a little bit disappointed in you, Rick. I'm not gonna lie. I like you as a rapper a lot and I'm very happy for you. That was it. We're gonna berate some more people who don't deserve to be berated, who are doing better than me. That seems to be the theme of this channel. Whoever's above me, I'm going to try and chop them down to my level. Yeah, let me know what you want to see. I'm happy everyone's back watching, if you are watching. Again, like, I always read comments and stuff like that. I actually do think the YouTube comments are important because one, they make me fucking laugh, and two, actually some great ideas come out of it sometimes. So, show me original ideas of videos that you've not seen anyone do what you want them to do. Um, show me, share with me video suggestions of things that you'd love to see someone who's in the fashion industry review or look at or give their hugely biased opinion on. And uh, yeah, that's it. Fuck you guys, I'm gonna have a uh, another Aperol spritz after this and probably black out until we go to sleep, do you know what I mean? I'm going to get some wins on Warzone.